y'all. Welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. I am still talking about solutions. Now, if you miss the definition of solutions, how we make solutions, what's the properties of solutions, make sure and head back to that video before. And if you're missing videos, that's because you haven't subscribed yet. Go ahead and press that subscribe button. Don't want to miss a single video in this series. In this lesson here, we're going to talk about the rate of dissolving. Rate. That's right, how fast something dissolves. More specifically, we're gonna talk about how to make things dissolve faster. So go grab your notes, go grab something to write with, and let's get started. Okay, so there's three ways to speed up the rate of dissolving or dissolution. Three things. Let's look at each one individually, okay? So the first one is agitation. Agitation, that is just a fancy word for stirring or shaking, okay? Let's look at an example of that. Okay, so I have two beakers of water. The water in each beaker, same temperature. I'm gonna pour a little bit of solute into each solvent. Now, if we were to leave these sitting, 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 they would both dissolve completely over time. Remember we talked about that thing, kinetic energy, how particles are always moving? These are liquids. The intermolecular forces allow these particles to move around. And that particle movement will cause this solute to dissolve if we were to do nothing to it. But if we're in a hurry and we want this solution to go ahead and form, we want our solute to dissolve faster, we could agitate it. We could agitate it by stirring. We could agitate it by shaking. So if we look at both of these, we can see this sugar, sugar was my solute. This sugar, some of it has dissolved already all on its own. This sugar, all the way dissolved because we agitated it. Agitation, that's one way to increase the rate of dissolving. Okay, so let's look and see how temperature speeds up the rate of dissolving. Okay, so I've got regular tap water here. And in this speaker, I've been boiling some water off to the side over here. So let's add hot water. I don't have the exact temperature, but just a second ago it was boiling. Boiling water, 100 degrees Celsius. Let's add some solute in. I just realized you might not be able to see this, but we still have some particles here. I'm going to turn this at some different angles and maybe you can see there is still some white solute in the bottom of this beaker here. Now I've done nothing to the temperature one except add it to hot water. Look at that perfectly clear. It is already completely dissolved. We didn't stir it, shake it, or anything. All we did was increase the temperature. Remember, it goes back to the kinetic energy of the particles. If the particles of water are racing around everywhere, then it's kind of like self-mixing. So the hotter the temperature of the solvent, that means the particles are going to be moving around faster and faster. And so basically, it's like stirring up the solute because those particles are going to cause that solute to evenly distribute through the solution. And that's all dissolving is. Let me show you another example of how these particles are moving so fast. So this example I'm about to show you is not really about solutions. It's more about diffusion, how particles spread out. But I wanted to prove to you that hot water molecules are moving much faster than cold water molecules. That's why when you increase the temperature, the solute will dissolve faster because the water molecules are speeding around so fast. Okay, so I've got one beaker that had cold water in it and one beaker that has hot water in it. Let's add some food coloring. Now what you should be noticing is that in this beaker, the hot water diffused the food coloring much faster. When we say increase the surface area, let's use sugar cubes for this example. So all of the particles are kind of molded and pressed together to make this cube. So if we were to drop these sugar cubes into our beaker, the water is only touching the surfaces that are on the outside. Those sugar particles that are on the inside of the cube, they're not touching the water. So the surface area, you know, all that means is the surface on the outside that's touching the solution. Here, not much of the surface area is going to be touching the solvent because some of it's locked up into the cube. But if we increase the surface area, you know what that is? That's just a fancy word for grinding it up. Okay, so let's use our mortar and pestle. We're gonna grind that up. I'm gonna put the sugar cube in. I'm gonna put 
the ground up sugar cubian. When we ground it up, we exposed more of the surface area of the crystals to the solvent. And when more of the surface of the solute is exposed to the solvent, that is going to increase the speed that it takes the solution to dissolve. Now we can see the cube, it's broke down and it's dissolving. I don't know if you can see that, but there are a lot of sugar crystals still at the bottom. There's still some sugar crystals at the bottom here, but the crystals are much, much smaller, meaning that we're exposing more of the surface area to the solvent, and so it's going to dissolve much quicker. Okay, so that is the three ways that we can force solute to dissolve faster. Agitation, that just means stirring, increasing the temperature, and increasing the surface area. I hope that makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of that was kind of common sense. I think we kind of already knew some of these things, but maybe just didn't really think about it. I hope that helps. Don't forget to stay tuned. There's several more videos left in this solution series. Until next time, bye y'all.